Welcome to the Deadwood. I'm Willow the Wendigo. I make my home here. Today, I'll be discussing El Mondo Calvo. He's an insufferable, we'll say, apologist, in quotation marks, who makes cognitively impaired videos about how cool Jesus is and how dumb atheists are. Sometimes he does other crap. The video I'm covering here attempts to make fun of trans people. I feel I'm qualified to shred it. So, don't be shy, grab a beverage or a bite to eat, and let's have a chat. Almondo Calvo is a Christian dork who thinks he's vastly more philosophically impactful than he truly is. He's built a channel on terrible pro-Christian dogma that attacks atheists, complete with SS Sniper Wolf type thumbnails and clickbaity titles such as Atheist gets destroyed and exposed of his delusion on his own live call show. They don't give up. And Ravi Zacharias puts atheist in his place. Full reaction! Teaching delusional atheists a lesson. He puts forth terrible arguments like this. So if there's absolutely no God and no standard beyond humanity, and we are nothing more than a bundle of particles that came together by nothing, not from intelligence, not from life, not from a personal being, not from a standard, then everything that everyone does is not absolutely wrong or right. Therefore, since we are all equal and equally came from the same cause, there are no human beings or sets of human standards that can go above our own personal opinion. That means that anything we do that other people believe to be wrong is not absolutely wrong. Therefore, nobody's wrong or right for what they do. Nothing more than a chemical reaction. So atheists have to stop pointing their finger at people unless they have an absolute standard above them that have established these absolute values. Now, when looking at laws, such as state laws and country laws, they seem to have came from a human source. The same source that seems to come from the same results of the Big Bang or of evolution, or of any other theory that does not include a personal being, such as God. Therefore, the laws don't matter. We cannot use it as an argument because it's nothing more than human opinion. Laws are human opinions. Unless there happens to be a standard beyond humanity by which we can recognize these laws as being absolutely true, despite some laws being perverted. But the point is, if you are going to be a logically consistent atheist, then you need to stand on what you believe. And pushes lies and misinformation by fraudsters like Ron Wyatt. And they looked at me and they said, Mr. Wyatt, this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it. This blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from the source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. These behaviors remind me of other similar channels I could name. He also regularly asks for donations, requesting that viewers sow a seed in his ministry via Cash App or Venmo. But he assures all money given will only be used for God's glory. Come on, just be honest, dude, and ask for money to support yourself and your channel if you want. But don't be a clown and pretend you're going to use the money for Lord Jeebus. In addition, Almondo wrote a book called God Is. As a result, he has been exposed as a horrifically inept intellectual and writer, as well as a rampant plagiarist by other YouTubers. Despite this, he continues to both think of himself as an apologetics messiah and to make videos defending himself, which he then seemingly deletes. Basically, um, I've been reading, I've been studying apolog apologetics for about a year to a year and a half, I think a year and a half, I'm, I'm, I think it's safe to say. And there's been a lot of apologetic books that I have read already um, at the back of this book, um, right here. 
right at the back of the book, we got Dr. Frank Turk, Norman Geisler, Greg Coco, William Lane Craig, J. Juan Wallace, C.S. Lewis, Lee Strobel, Rebbe Zacharias, John Lennox, Paul Copan, Josh McDowell, Gary Habermas, and Dr. Michael Brown. These were all people that I've, um, that I've looked up to, that I've been following for a very long time, and I've been learning from. Um, so, a lot of the stuff in this book are more just pieces of their arguments and a lot of um, their writings, and I decided to elaborate on their writings, elaborate on their arguments, because I felt that there could have been a bit more added to their arguments, and um, I just kind of wanted to kind of put the cherry on top of some of the arguments and stuff, so, but I felt that giving kind of a piece of what I've learned, my wisdom, um, that I was blessed with through the Holy Spirit, I wanted to kind of, you know, elaborate to it to kind of give you guys um, a different perspective and a, and a more wider um, explanation to some of these arguments and, and, and principles. So, the book is a challenging read. Um, this book is meant for people to be challenged, especially atheists and other Christians who are maybe, you know, having struggles with their faith and stuff like that. Maybe they have questions that need to be answered. So this book is really good. No way. Not a chance. I'll link in the description below to the channels of David John Wellman and Logic. They both made extensive content critiquing and debunking Almondo's book, which I don't believe is available anymore for obvious reasons. Did you know that Almondo is also, and I use the term very loosely, a music artist? Yes, indeed. He's somewhat of a savant in making terrible content. He promotes fraudulent apologists, presents his own painful arguments, uses clickbaity titles and thumbnails, plagiarizes other books when writing his own, and even makes awful music. Here's a sample. Coming from a place where I didn't feel hope. Daisy got me feeling like I'm never going on. Yeah, yeah. With my name's written and what got me living. I got no intentions of moving. Anyway, today's video features Almondo attacking trans people's identities. As usual, he seems to know next to nothing about what he's talking about, makes a fool of himself, and presents a terrible argument. But of course, he speaks with complete authority and the utmost confidence. What's that called again? Psychologists have shown that people unskilled at something somehow do not know their own incompetence. The video is titled I identify as an actual banana. Banana emoji. My social construct relies on bananas. Candace Owens featuring Mark. Perhaps this is a subconscious reference to the quality of his apologetics. I can't be sure. The first two thirds of it are ripped straight from a Candace Owens broadcast. She is far too rancid to tackle in this video, so I'll ignore her as a person for the most part. Let's just address what is said rather than her background. We'll listen to the first minute or so, then address it piece by piece. Again, we're going to jump into a full-screen Candace Owens video with Mark Lamont Hill, but this is actually the cold open of Al Mondo's video. True is me being born with a penis, right? Um, but the truth is, but the, but the idea that there's social meanings attached to that blackness that make people fear me or that make people think that the, this per that person's life is worth more because they're white or whatever, those are social meanings that are arbitrary Correct. and different. So, so to, to acknowledge social constructs doesn't mean you ignore biological realities. But you just did that when you said that men could give birth. So, so similarly, what I'm saying is, is that I'm not denying the biological reality of maleness, of, of the genitalia we're assigned at birth and what we can do with those body parts. I'm not denying that. That's a biological reality. Again, the social meaning I'm attaching to it is what I'm saying is more complicated. It's a, but it's not complicated. Can men give birth? Sometimes. That's my answer. Yes. And the answer, that is that is crazy. And this is, we, we cannot, it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. We cannot allow this to happen. But you wouldn't say the definition of being a woman is the ability to give birth. And I'm not saying it's, only women can give birth is a factually true statement. Only women can give birth. There, there's only one type of human being Only people with birth. uteruses and vaginas yes, and can stuff give can give birth. birth. Only women can give birth. You, I'm not, men I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not, and that, here's what, I think we're talking past each other. What I'm saying is, I'm not disputing the fact that certain body parts yield certain kinds of possibilities, right? What I'm disagreeing with is the idea that that is the measure of whether or not you're a man or a woman in, in, in society. Okay, but... It that feels like a lot to take in, but what's actually going on here is relatively simple. Mark is arguing for the existence of gender, a social construct, and is correctly separating gender from sex. Candace, being the ignorant and rancid ghoul she is, is relentlessly equating sex with gender. Incidentally, this is something I was explicitly taught by my parents. Let's break down how she does this. Mark begins by making a parallel between gender and race. In this case, 
his being born with a penis and his being born black. True is me being born with a penis, right? Um, but the truth is, but the, but the idea that there's social meanings attached to that blackness that make people fear me or that make people think that the, this per that person's life is worth more because they're white or whatever, those are social meanings that are arbitrary right. and different. He points out that there are arbitrary social values and meanings ascribed to him because of his skin color, just as there is such value ascribed to white people, and not all people see those values as the same. The implication here is that maleness or femaleness are ascribed to certain body parts, but are largely arbitrary. This analogy misses the mark a little, no pun intended, but it somewhat gets the point across. This clip also starts in the middle of a conversation, so I don't know if it's deceptively edited. I'm just going on what is presented. Mark is indeed right that human bodies are assigned maleness or femaleness somewhat arbitrarily. Sex is a spectrum, with many disorders of sexual development catalogued and with bodies falling on various ends of said spectrum. Some individuals form with completely stereotypical traits, while some are born intersex. The individual may have chromosomal profiles of the opposite sex, or even mismatched genitalia, compared to the rest of their body and gender identity. So, so to, to acknowledge social constructs doesn't mean you ignore biological realities. But you just did that when you said that men could give birth. This is where Candace Owens starts insisting gender and sex are the same thing. The Endocrine Society is a worldwide organization of 18,000 endocrinologists and similar professionals and has been a pioneer in hormonal science and public health since it was founded in 1916. In 2021, they released an extensive scientific statement. In the very first section, it takes great pains to point out that gender and sex are not the same thing. Quote, Gender is often misused as a synonym for sex. For example, when filling out forms for various activities, we are routinely asked to check a box labeled gender but the only available options are boxes labeled M and F. But sex is not the same thing as gender, and using these terms as equivalents obfuscates differences that are real and important in society in general, and biomedical research in particular." End quote. Mark needed to define his terms properly, and point out that he's describing gender, a social construct, and sex, a biological measure, which are different things. Again, he might have, because the conversation is clipped by Almondo, but I'm not certain. Candace is improperly claiming that, by saying male-gendered people with female reproductive organs can give birth, Mark is ignoring biological reality. This isn't the case, as he tries to explain. Unfortunately, in English, both gender and sex use the descriptors male and female, which adds to confusion and improper interchangeability with the terms. And again, Mark fails to point out that he is describing gender and sex, which are not the same. So, so similarly, what I'm saying is, is that I'm not denying the biological reality of maleness, of, of the genitalia we're assigned at birth and what we can do with those body parts. I'm not denying that. That's a biological reality. Again, the social meaning I'm attaching to it is what I'm saying is more complicated. It's a so Mark is clearly stating here that he doesn't accept that someone with a penis can give birth through that penis. In order to give birth, you need a uterus. You often use a vagina as well, but this is only the case in about two-thirds of births in the United States, and there are other ways to deliver a child. But it's not complicated. Can men give birth? Sometimes. That's my answer, yes. And, and there we are. Mark is correct. A lot of people squirm when hearing this fact, but it's really simple. Human beings are fiercely intelligent, highly social, and highly mentally sophisticated creatures. We are, as far as we know, the only creatures that have gender. So, a human being that has a uterus and a male gender identity is, in fact, a man that can give birth. But... Candace Owens doesn't accept that. Apparently, it conflicts with her worldview. So she fights back with the powerful argument of, uh, just saying it's crazy over and over, and then reasserting her belief that Mark is wrong. The answer to that is, that is crazy. And this is, we, we cannot, it's just, it's just crazy. We cannot allow this to happen. But you wouldn't say the definition of being a woman is the ability to give birth. And I'm not saying that only women can give birth is a factually true statement. Only women can give birth. There, there's only one type of human being Only do with uteruses birth. and vaginas yes, and can stuff give can birth. give birth. Only women can give birth. You, I'm not, men I'm not cannot disagreeing with that. I'm not... 
Not a good rebuttal. In response, Mark is about to do a good thing here and try to reset the conversation. He attempts to breach the gap and point out, once again, that he's not denying biological reality, and that you must have a uterus to gestate a child to term. He also gets really close to pointing out the connection that just because you have certain body parts, i.e. a sex, does not mean you have a certain gender identity. That is, just because you are male or female doesn't mean you are a man or a woman. Unfortunately, he still hasn't defined his terms yet, so his attempt falls flat. And that, here's what I think we're talking past each other. What I'm saying is, I'm not disputing the fact that certain body parts yield certain kinds of possibilities, right? What I'm disagreeing with is the idea that that is the measure of whether or not you're a man or a woman in, in, in society. Okay, but... It hey. Yeah! Oh, I forgot this is an Armando video, supposedly. It's just that the majority of it is simply a full-screen rip of someone else's content. Anyway, let's see what the loon has to say. I just wanted to come on YouTube today to let you guys know some good news. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe this isn't some apologetics nonsense after all. What's the good news, Almondo? The news that I have decided to identify as a banana. What you see here is my friends and family. You got my mom right here, my dad right here, my sister over here. Um, but recently, my grandpa, he unfortunately couldn't make it. A little creepy, bro. Okay, it's not creepy. It's creepy. But I've decided to identify as a banana. Sit up, banana! <laughs> yum, yum. Okay, I know what this is. It's the anti-trans, I identify as an AA-64 Apache helicopter talking point that's been around for years. It's fucking stupid. It's also fundamentally flawed, because it and its variations assume sex and gender are interchangeable, and thus the same thing. They require this in order to suppose you can identify as an inanimate object or non-human animal, just as you can identify as a different gender than that assigned to you at birth. The same word is used, but this is not the case. We say you can identify as a certain gender because only an individual knows their own thoughts. You can't exactly prove your gender identity to someone else, just as you can't prove you are having troubling thoughts about an upcoming surgery, or public speaking engagement. But you don't identify your gender, a social construct that reflects how you operate in society, as the physical structure of a machine or a non-human animal. You identify your gender, whether you realize it or not, as something along the spectrum of human gender identities, whether it be one that matches your sex or one that you slowly learn is incongruent with your sex. The fundamental premise of the criticism Almondo is parroting is flawed. You can see how absurd it is by flipping it back and forth. You can't identify your gender, a social construct, as a physical thing like an Apache helicopter. Neither can you change your sex, which is physical characteristics, to somewhere on the gender spectrum, which is your mental state and social role in society. So, sorry, Almondo, but you aren't a banana, and will never be one. A banana is a fruit. It is not a gender identity. And you are a human being, not a plant. Although the quality of your arguments sometimes makes me wonder. Um, I believe that I can be peeled open and eaten by human beings. I'm not here to shame anyone's porn habits. If you're into banana vor porn, go for it. But leave me out of it. And maybe don't share that with your Christian audience on YouTube. Except, maybe Ray Comfort. Come on, baby, get down on all fours. Let's walk, walk, walk. I'm gonna take you to my bungalow. Uh, indie jungle low. We're gonna make banana love. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. Notice it has a point at the top for ease of entry. Ease of entry. We're gonna make banana love. And I also believe that I can give birth to human babies. I mean, that's completely ridiculous unless you have a uterus. 
I don't believe we can safely do transplants with those yet, so this probably isn't going to happen. But, hey, if you feel your gender identity is mismatched with your body, and you have a non-male gender identity, then you should totally talk to- As a banana. So, my question to Mark Lamont Hill, can bananas give birth to human beings? I'd like to hear from you. I'll answer for him, because this is so unfathomably dumb that part of me suspects you've been possessed by the ghost of a four-year-old and are asking questions on its behalf. No, a banana cannot give birth to a human being. It is a banana. Banana. Banana! It does not have a uterus. It is not genetically compatible with human beings, and it is physically impossible for a plant or their fruits to interbreed with humans. Wow. That was exceptionally... Uh... Stupid. Not quite the word I was looking for. But we managed to get through it. Congratulations! If you want to suffer through more Almondo, be sure to check out the links in the description to two channels far more noteworthy than mine. That's all for now. I'm Willow the Wendigo, bidding you farewell. Wherever you are, I hope you have a lovely night's sleep. And remember, you're always welcome in the Deadwood. Oh,